Uh, good morning, this is Nicholas and I'm the one of the members for this uh, to explain this code entirely from line 1 to line 159. Uh, we'll start, we'll just we'll not talk more and then just get straight to the point. So first we have preprocessor directive which is very important inside a code because they link the library header files to to the program itself. So let's say I have IO stream, input output stream, CMF, CMF is basically the calculations. IO stream is basically input output. Lah. So you can allow C out and C in to function. <coughs> Hashtag include limits basically limits how many uh how many it basically limits the amount of character inside a certain data type let's say or oh, I can only limit a uh, hundred I can only limit 100 characters for character type data. Have stream is basically file stream. It includes OF stream and IF stream so that every time when you want to code, right, you don't have to type OF stream or IF stream. You just have to code uh, hashtag include F stream. That's it. Hashtag include stream is basically to allow uh, the string functions to work using nameplate SCD basically it links them up together so that you don't really have to write SCD double double dot C out like this one now. Okay, the next one will be the function declarations. You, we are my team that did five functions for this mini project uh, today. We got punching, notching, angle sharing, bending, and cutting. And I'll do the explanation part for punching. Now this is our the this is our global our global variable and then it has constant with this double pi which is a data type to identify the variable it equals to 3.142 since double gives it uh, the decimal points for it constant is basically basically to make this variable unchanging throughout the whole process no matter what and then we got uh, I forgot to explain a bit here the we got off stream and the ampersand is basically to allow you to continue write in the code no matter what Okay, next one will be integer main with the double uh, double brackets as well. Is the uh is the main function where everything goes. So I'll handle this part as well. So we have identifying variables. We got the data type for safety, data type for selection, character type for selection number two. These are all set set as a character as it only allows one one character. Okay, off stream basically. Uh, output file stream to make this one out file. Okay, let's say results.txt. I don't have results.txt. I know I have it here, but let's say if you don't have, they'll eventually create one file, one text file for you to store the data. iOS double dot double dot app is basically to allow the file uh, to continuously write into the file itself without overwriting it. Uh, the one that overwrites it is only the iOS double double dot uh, out. And you have to end it with a semicolon to state that this is the final statement for this line of code. And then you got the if uh, exclamation mark is basically not of all C out error opening for writing and then return one. Or you want to type C E R R or exit one. See, uh, this is an error message. If they run into an error where the out file is still open without it closing, uh, which I'll explain here. Every time when you finish writing a file, right, you have to close it. Because if you don't close it, you keep running in the background. Eventually, you run into errors like this. Now, we use the execute the statement one time. Only confirmation if they want to repeat or not. This is the do while function. No matter if the condition is true or not, you eventually have to execute it one time first. Then you only allow it to continue. So let's say I want to execute this one first. Display menu of selection of what to do with the machine. We make this one a bit simple since we don't need to put string dot get line because that will make it look more clumpy. We want things to be complex and easy to it, to understand. So let's say please select the process you wish to execute. A for punching, B for notching, C for angle sharing, D for bending, E for cutting. Don't worry, my my team had organized these functions accordingly, without uh, without it being uh up up here or there or unorganized. Uh. And then we prompt the user with the selection. Let's say the user type A, A for punching, B for B for notching, as I said before. Now you got case A, case B, case C, case D, case E. Case is basically the condition itself, switch selection, which is basically the data that the user had typed. This is basically one of the utilization of selection sequence to allow our fun to allow our programming 
to go e to go smoother and flawlessly. So let's say case A, and then I proc punching, I activate punching, then I break. Break basically means to exit the loop immediately, lah. Once finished, you need to have the default. If anything goes wrong, they will like let's say all of these conditions are not bad, and you cannot activate one of them, then you have to do something like this. Default is executed. Sorry, bad language. Executed when the other conditions are not met, and then you have to uh show out the error and then exit the loop immediately. Now, when you exit the loop, do you uh repeat the user again for, or do you wish to re repeat the process? If why, then continue lah. If not why, then we we'll just give a uh thank you to the user for using it. Thanks for using. Bye bye. And which ends the coding, but not yet. You have to close the file as it's a must. Like I said before, if you don't close the file, you eventually run into error like this. Error opening file for writing. Okay. Now once you finish on that part, you wait. Once you finish on that part, you eventually have to return zero in the main function, no matter what. Now let's say uh the user pick a punching, which I'm going to explain my part here. Punching, which may basically meant punching is selected. Now I have to declare my variables, and this has their own. Uh, functions as well. Let's say integer number selection, num selection, double thickness. This will be a decimal number. Okay. Now our display sub menu is basically the same function as this one. Okay. Now press one because since I initialized this, the data type is integer, not the same as the character just now. That was the other application we use integer. So let's say one, two, three, where it's max thickness, nine point five for stainless steel because each steel has their own different property, which adds in a bit of uh, uh, manufacturing process knowledge here. And then we got the type. We prompt the user again with the type of metal sheet. Let's say, oh, you wanna press one for this, press two for this, press three for this, and etc. Now, if what happens if you press another one? We'll talk about it later. Now, eventually, we needed two data from the user. First is number selection. What's his selection? And the post, uh, the thickness of the metal sheet in millimeter C in uh, these two arrows with this thickness. All stream out file. Open the result.txt, ios.appendix, basically the one I explained before, you have to open the file again. If not, or it runs into an error. Now let's say, if thickness is less than zero, which basically means it will be a negative number, we display an error that you have, that the user have to, in, uh, to read, read in a positive number no matter what. Even if it's zero, it doesn't matter. So let's say else if, which this is the true condition that we want. Let's say num selection equals to equals to one and and basically means both of the conditions must be true. And if you want to make the con each of the conditions if they're complex and you want you want to make them versatile, right? You need to put these two straight arrows, basically making them or or let's say oh I put one for stainless steel and then my max thickness is nine point five, right? Even if I put nine point five. Uh, it will allow the code to run and activate this function to call it. We'll eventually transfer the data of thickness later. I'll explain why. Our file, which basically opens the file and then write it in. Now, if not any of these, right? Okay, let's say my num selection I get is four. Then uh, all my thickness is more than this num these three numbers here. We'll eventually display an error saying, "Oh, sorry, either the metal sheet is too thick or the selected metal sheet is too invalid," and then you close the file. Okay, now what happens if we got the correct condition? We'll of course call the care punching thickness our file. Now come here. <coughs> Void care punching. We use the we utilize the pass by value uh pass by value of double x off stream and our file. Off stream and like I said, keeps writing the data in. Double x, okay. Our explanator again declaration of variables and data types basically double diameter, punch hole, volume. All of this will be in decimals, no matter what. It's not an integer since it's millimeter. Now, see how your metal sheet is approved to be punched within the available range. So, basically, the wall function that that's uh, explained just now, which is void punching, to make sure that the metal sheet is allowed to be punched at the first place, then only we do the cal calculation part. See out blah blah blah. See in diameter. We want to read the user's diameter first, and then punch hole equals to pi times power. Uh, you need these two uh what do you call it parentheses. Wait, this one as well because the area of a area of a hole or let's say a circle will be pi r square. 
since most of the time the machine would be uh yeah, it's the punching hole is adjustable at some point. Now you eventually have to apply like I said before the the no matter how many times you want to change this value it will always remain the same as 3.142. This asterisk is basically mean times power and then this is basically the number bit below it let, let's imagine an index number with its power as well the power is 2 semicolon to end the statement see how area of the punch hole is blah 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 we show its unit and line volume remove blah 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 okay the x we take is from the one that you called before basically to take the value from the user and then uses it back again as an x see how volume of the remove sheet is volume remove you calculated this and you show this blah 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 and then you write results to the file alpha punching results uh, alpha hole diameter shows diameter shows punch hole and shows volume remove eventually you don't need to state the type of the metal sheet since we only just wanted to see uh, how many stuff has been removed and the punching hole diameter was what and etc now once we finish this we will we come back to here as where the function had called and then once you once this one is finished it will eventually exit the loop or I'll say exit the call function which comes back to here okay this one is already executed once done break it in exit the loop media you have to do this one before doing the break first since it came first like I said coding the eventually read from top to bottom and then we'll come to an end where do you wish to repeat the process yes or not like I said okay if he wants to continue with other functions no it doesn't have to be only mine you know, uh, it doesn't have to be only mine or he want to do other functions as well such as notching, angle sharing and etc or he want to repeat my function is also can since I don't use the ampersand I don't use the pass by reference for x if I use pass by reference for x it will keep changing the data which is which burdens the whole coding as well okay now let's do a test run on my code uh, we'll do a test run for my own part which is punching okay let's run the code first Okay, let's say, please select the process you wish to execute A for punching. Okay, now I want to do A for punching. Yeah. Okay, I have selected punching. This machine has a tonnage rating of 100 tons. State the type of metal sheet. Let's say I have a stainless steel metal sheet. And then I want to choose that. Oh, please provide the thickness of metal sheet in millimeters. Uh, my, my metal sheet is 7 millimeters. And then it will show that oh I'm approved to have this thing punched within the available range. Basically shows the validation. Now select your desired punching hole diameter. Oh I want to remove because if in terms of removing that one hole right, you eventually have to you eventually have to uh the user most of the time or let's say engineers they will eventually need to find the diameter of the hole that they want to operate on it's not a radius because the radius will be very confusing as hell we'll just do diameter so let's say my diameter uh let's say 1 cm 1 cm is basically 10 millimeter lah. and then oh it shows that the area of the punch hole is 78.55 3.142 times 10 divided by 2 with this power of 5 basically uh, 5 5 25 times 3 by 1 4 2 you eventually get this number this one times the thickness which I said 7 7 times this one you get this one and then you ask me do you do I wish to recreate the process yes of course now uh, I'll explain the the possible errors that will occur okay let's say I a b c d e I decided to choose f because I'm feeling lucky today Oh no, invalid selection. Do I wish to repeat the process? Yeah, why not? Okay, now I'll do it correctly this time. Okay, I'll go back to punching. Now, uh, as I said, basically show back the set menu, which means the code has run successfully. Now, what happens if I want to make another error here again? Or let's say the user accidentally type 4. And then, okay, it continues. Don't worry, we haven't stopped there. Please provide the thickness. Let's say, oh, I wanted to choose aluminum, but I want to exit the code immediately. So I'll just press 207. Oh no, either the metal sheet is too thick or the selected metal sheet is invalid. Basically, if I this one press 4, that means the selected metal sheet is invalid. It will eventually display this error. Bit, uh, because the main goal of our programming is to minimize human errors as much as possible. So do I wish to repeat the process? Yes, again, because I got more to explain right here. I'll go back to the punching part again. 
Okay, let's say, please state the type of metal sheet that I am operating on. I'll say, um, okay, let's say I'm a user because humans make mistakes. Uh, okay, I identify mine as a stain stainless steel. The maximum thickness. Oh no, what happens if this is a little too thick for the operating machine? 9.6. Oh no, either the metal sheet is too thick or the little metal sheet is invalid. Do I wish to repeat the process again? Yeah, why not? Okay, as again, punching. What happens if I decided to press 1 for stainless steel and this one I put negative 10? What will happen? <gasps> Thickness cannot be negative. Please enter a valid value. Then that means you cannot... Uh, that means, how, how is any metal sheet negative there? Are you going to break the matrix? is it? Okay, do I wish to repeat the process? Now we do it correctly this time. Okay, A for punching. Now, uh, I choose mild steel. The max thickness is already as shown because mild steel is a very soft material. Please provide the thickness of the metal sheet in millimeters. 19 exactly there. Now, your metal sheet, it shows that it's validated. Now select your desired punching hole diameter. I want to do 21, 2.1 cm. And then basically the calculation is correct and all that. Now there should be no problem at all. Then I'll end the program. Thank you for using. Bye bye. And then that's the end of our code. I want to show something. Results.txt. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. The don't mind this one. This one is this one is the other day I tested. Okay, this should be the correct one. Punching results 10 millimeter is basically the first one I did with the code run successfully. The second one is basically the last one I did to show that the code also is properly executed no matter what because we want to make our code as versatile as readable as possible and makes it easy to understand. And when we do the text file, because text uh, out file is very useful in terms of storing data permanently in your hard disk. And which stores the data I have right here, or the ones I did before. Like, let's read, uh, okay. And closes the file, basically that's it lah. And thank you very much for listening to my presentation today. And I'll, I'll stop recording.